But I don't know about you, I find that explanation very unsettling and very dissatisfying. Cause I'm like, but, but, but I don't do that. On the second morning, I, I'm sorry, on the first morning, I don't get out the Tuesday socks cause I don't care about Tuesday socks. I care about Monday socks. So I will have, you know, come Tuesday morning, I'll have eight socks left and then seven socks. So even though this explanation actually is true, I don't know, just for me, I don't know, maybe you guys are like, oh fine, that clicks for me. Doesn't for me. Okay, I was not satisfied with this explanation. So here's what we're going to do. Yesterday, we talked about the whole idea of, you know, dynamic probability, that's what makes probability trees really useful. That's when they're useful, okay? So we're gonna do a probability tree for this one, okay? Now you're gonna have to follow very carefully here. I'm gonna try and explain how to be smart about drawing probability trees, because there are good ways and bad ways to do it, okay? Let's begin. Let's think about the first, um, I'm actually going to think about them not just as mornings, I'm going to think about them as individual socks. Okay, so I need, I need more space. We'll do this. And you're going to need more space too, so rule off whatever you're doing. I'm going to have a first sock, whoops, a second, a third, and then a fourth. Okay, so this is what I'm going to go through. <coughs> Let's rehearse again from scratch, okay? For the first sock that I pick, here are my choices, okay? Sorry, I haven't picked any yet. Okay, so does it matter which one I choose? Still doesn't matter, does it? Okay, so here's my first sock, right? So I can actually pick any sock. That is the only probability that I'm interested in, right? Now, if I were to draw this out, like actually I've got 10 to choose from, but I don't want to have a probability tree that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten branches, because even with one level, let alone two, three, and four levels, it's already unworkable. Okay? So I'm going to condense it down. What's the probability of picking any sock? Well, just like before, there are ten favorable outcomes, and there are ten total outcomes. So far, so good? Great. Now I go to pick out the second sock. Now, here, there are two alternatives, and we need to consider them differently. I hope you'll see why in a second, okay? I'm either going to pick, sorry, so I've picked a sock now, so I'll circle this again. I'm either gonna pick a sock that matches that one, they'll be the same, or I won't. It'll be different, okay? So, not the same. Okay, we've already worked out this part of the question. This is going to be one over nine, Right? Notice the sample space, by the way. Can you see why I didn't just write one? I want to see this will be 10, this will be nine, this is going to be out of eight, this is going to be out of seven, right? Build it in a way that makes the logic easier to see, not harder. That makes the complement eight over nine. So far, so good, okay? Now let's think about here. If I picked, this is now this scenario, okay? I picked a pair that matches. That's this morning here, okay? So that was this one, right? Let's think about this now. I have eight choices. Does it matter which of these eight that I pick for my third sock? No. It doesn't matter. I'm in exactly the same situation I was in the first morning, okay? So therefore, going here, I can pick any sock that I like, provided I picked a match the first time, right? So this went 10, nine, this'll be eight out of eight. Is that okay? I'll come back to this one in a second. Let's complete what happens here because it's easier, okay? Now, just like the first morning, I'm in the same scenario, right? How many socks are left? Well, it's gonna be out of seven, and out of seven, right? I'm either gonna pick a fourth sock that matches the third, or a fourth sock that doesn't match the third, right? I'll be in this scenario again. Same, whoops, or not same. Are you happy with that idea? How many socks are the same as the one I picked out? One. And then you've got the complement. Okay, excellent. Now let's come down to this guy, right? The game changes, and this is why it's so important to have the probability tree, okay? I didn't pick socks that are the same, right? So I didn't pick A and A. I picked, for example, A and B. Okay, pause. Does it matter which of the eight remaining socks that I pick? And the answer is, it does matter. 
it does matter. It makes a difference, okay? Because if I pick my third sock to be A, oh, I'm stuffed already, <laughs> right? I can, there's no chance having picked A on the second morning because I already got A out of the drawer yesterday, as Elian says, it was in the wash, okay? So there's a zero chance if I pick this guy, it's impossible that I'll get a match. A is not the only one, which is the other one. B, if I pick B, I'm similarly up the creek and going to have to hide my socks all day, okay? So therefore, there is two possibilities here, right? I can pick a sock that makes it impossible to get a match, okay? So I'm gonna call that, very Doctor Who, I'm gonna call this the impossible sock, okay? <laughs> There's a sock I can choose which, which gives me no chance of getting a match, right? And there are two of them out of eight, okay? Two out of eight. Of course you can write a quarter there, but can you see why I'm not? Right? I'm trying to make the sample space clear. So therefore, you know, obviously I could write the complement of impossible, that's a bit of a double negative. So I'm gonna write there, you know, I can pick a sock that does make it possible. I can still get a match, and because it's the complement, six out of eight. So far so good? Good. I forget about this guy now. I'm not interested in him because all I want, I rubbed it off, all I want is a match for the second morning. So I don't worry about him anymore. I come down to this one, right? So I didn't pick one of these impossible socks, right? I've now picked out, for instance, I picked out C. That's a possible sock, isn't it? Okay. And then I've got two possibilities. I'm gonna get a match or I'm not. I'll either get one that's the same or not the same. Okay, what's the sample space? Well, there were 10 socks here, and then nine, and then eight, and then seven, right? So this is gonna be out of seven, out of seven, because I've already pulled three out. I picked C, color C. How many socks are the same? One. And then the other six are different. Okay. Now, what was the question I was after? I was trying to work out what's the probability of getting a match at this point, okay? So that's this one. That's this branch here and this branch here, right? Those are the ones where I have a match on the second morning and I don't really care what happened on the first morning, okay? So let's work out each one in turn and then we can add them together. Product rule to get to here, addition rule to put these guys together, okay? So what would I call this one? I'd call it same, same. Two mornings, same both times, okay? So the probability of getting it same twice, right, is one times a ninth times one times a seventh. Is that okay? One on 63. Seven times nine, yeah? Now I have a look at this one. What should I call it? I guess I would call it not same and then same. That's what happens each morning. Right? So not same and then same. The probability is going to be one times eight ninths times six eighths times one seventh. Four events, right? And they're all strung together. I won't worry about the one. I've got eight over nine times six over eight times one over seven. I've got some fraction business here. I can cancel some stuff here. I can cancel some eights, right? I get left with six on 63. Of course, I could simplify that further, but I'm not going to because I want to add these two, right? These are my two possibilities. I should add them. The probability of a match the second morning. It looks to me like it's one on 63 plus six on 63. That's seven on 63. <laughs> Which is a night. So hold on a second. What just happened? Okay. We confirmed our original answer. It, sure enough, it's a nine. Okay. But it's weird. There's no replacement going on. It doesn't suggest that you would get the same probability of a match the second morning as you would the first and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Always the same. Okay. I think the reason why is because subconsciously, I think we're kind of thinking of this, right? It's like, look, 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 I, I want this particular event to happen and then this one. But actually there are other ways for it to happen. And when you add them all up, lo and behold, you get the same thing, okay? 
So the moral of the story is, number one, be careful. Number two, can you see now that the diagram is there, you can't argue with the diagram. There's nothing left out. Every sock is accounted for. Every probability is there. You can see I can't have gotten any of the probabilities wrong on any of the branches. Because look, you can even see it counting down. Right? I have constructed my answer in such a way that now you could pick this up without my 15 minute explanation. And I hope it stands by itself. Your answers need to do the same. 